Hello. A common problem with Nuffield and Leyland tractors is the half shaft oil seal here on this trumpet housing that I've got off a 460 to demonstrate on starts leaking. And they are, after all, between 60 and 40 years old, so it's not surprising they start to leak. Removing the half shaft on the later models that don't have the selective spacer behind the inboard gear over here uh, is quite straightforward. You can take it out and put it back in again. If you've got an earlier model, the trumpet housing has to be taken off the tractor to replace the seal because when you pull the shaft out, the selective shim behind the gear drops to the bottom and cannot be reinstated with it in situation so that's a, that's the job you have to do with the earlier models but from I think the 460 onwards it could be done on the tractor. In the early days Leyland specified uh, two to six thou end float on the bearings like you would on an old uh, Morris Minor or Mark II Escort a little bit to play in the bearings for when it gets warm but what they found is that as the seals hardened, this little bit of end float also gave a little bit of radial movement and they started leaking. So later on they revised the information in the workshop manual to preload. And they way, the way they uh, specified to do this was to wrap a piece of string around the wheel studs and pull it with a spring balance to measure the resistance taken to rotate the shaft. Now that's fine when it's in the workshop on a bench, but if you're doing it on the tractor and the inboard cog is meshed, meshed with the brake shaft gear, this is impossible. So I'm looking for a different method of doing this that's satisfactory so that people don't have to take the trumpet housing off completely and can set the preload with it on the tractor. So let's have a look at this one. I've already tightened the inboard nut up to a hundred pounds torque which is fairly tight for a nut that size. Let's have a go with the spring balance see what the result I get. And I'll just pull the spring balance steadily like this and it's rotating quite easily. I'm registering a force of just four pounds to rotate the uh, shaft which is not enough the nut wants to be tighter so uh, I don't know what you think about this but to me a nut of that size a hundred pounds torque is a lot of force and it's a lot of load on the bearings so let's have a look what we've got and see what else we can do so let's go around now and have a look at the, the business end of the shaft where the nut is. Okay, this is the business end of the half shaft. I've marked it up with some white crayon. Let's have a look exactly what we've got. I'll zoom in. Right, this is the position this uh, nut was in when I took the tractor to bits, but I've slackened it off one full turn so that I can rotate it. The pin was in this hole here, which I think I can just uh, put that in a bit. That's where the pin was. It was lined up with one I've marked zero. And these marks here represent the cross drillings in the shaft. There's, there's three drillings, so we've got zero, one, two, and three. And they, as you can see, they don't line up exactly with the slots. The nut itself has got eight castellations in it. So we can actually move it so that number two lines up, the pin goes in that hole, and if you move it till number three lines up there, the pin goes in that hole there. So what we've actually got is eight there and three there. So that gives you 24 different positions as you turn it round. So now let's have a look 
and see what uh, all this means when I spell it out on uh, a bit of paper. Right, this is the figures that's in the work workshop manual, the revised figures. Uh, for the 502, which has the small stud pattern, it's 8.5 to £11 force on the string. For the tractors with the larger stud pattern, like the 465 and the 7, 272, it's 6 to £9 force. Well, I've got a 460 half shaft, and the PCD of the wheel studs on that is similar to the 502, so I should be looking at 8 and a half to 11 pounds force to rotate the shaft and I tightened the nut to 100 pounds torque and I was only getting 4 pounds uh, force on the spring balance to rotate the shaft so obviously the nut would want to go a lot lot tighter and I myself I'm not happy with that I think it's a, a lot of unnecessary stress on the bearings so let's have a look at what we have got I've took the nut off previously and measured the threads on the shaft. It's 12 threads to the inch. I'll just write that down here. 12 T P I. So if we do a simple calculation, one inch as a decimal, 1000 over 12 gives us 83.33 recurring thousandth of an inch. Now the nut has eight castellations on it. So 83.33 over eight, that gives us 10.416 So each movement of the castellation is approximately 10 thou, but as we've got three positions in the shaft, we can divide that again. So I'll do it over here so you can see it because it's probably off the bottom of the board. 10.416 uh, over 3 gives us 3.4722. Recurring thousandth of an inch. So we have the possibility of moving the nut up three and a half thou at a time. So we've got pretty fine adjustment. On the test I'd done, I'd moved the nut up one full castellation, which is ten and a half thou. And as an original 460 shaft, I'd measured it, it had got about um, six thou end float which is what the book specifies and I needed a hundred pound to achieve that so by the time we get this kind of figure up here there's going to be a lot of force on the nut so what I'm going to try is to just move it up um, two movements of the not not a full movement on the nut but just move it round two holes on the holes in the shaft which will give me about seven thou so it's just nipped it up a thou uh, there won't be a great deal of force on it and that I'm going to have to try um, we'll go and have a look at it and we'll see what torque it needs to achieve that kind of movement so that people can recreate this on their tractor with it actually fitted in the gearbox so now we'll go back to the um, to the half shaft again I'll uh, I'll just zoom in on these uh, figures for a second so that you can see um, the calculations I'll just move the camera down a little bit and leave that there for a few seconds if you're watching this on YouTube you can just freeze the frame but as I say you get 10 to move it one complete notch of the nut you get 10 thou but if you just move it round the holes in the shaft you get three and a half thou at a time 
back at the business end again I'll just remind you of uh, some of the markings on this I'll zoom in for that um, there you go a little bit closer when I took the tractor to bits the pin was in this position uh, which I've marked zero I'd also marked the nut and gear relationship A the test I did at the beginning of this video using the spring balance I'd rotated the nut from A to position B this other mark on the gear and that took a hundred pounds force what I'm going to do now is rotate it till the pin goes in number two on the shaft so I get the tool this is uh, something I've had laser cut you can buy them off me if you want one and put the torque wrench on it and we'll just pull that round so we're going about two thirds of the way that's 50 pounds force put that down safely and now the pin with a bit of care will go in position two perhaps not quite there perhaps once leaving moving another smidge in but um, it's going to be very difficult just to show me up because i'm filming it tell you what let's put the tool on and just pull it around a little bit more Well, you know what? I'm going to give up. This is why they tell you in the manual to use a new pin. But that is lined up with position two. So I've pulled it up about seven thou. So it's got about one or two thou preload. Uh, we'll go around the other side in a minute and do, uh, do a little spring balance test, see what it takes to rotate it. But that was 50 pounds on the torque wrench to get it to that position. Let's go and have a look the other side. Here we are, back at the uh, wheel flange end. I've wrapped the string round, attached the spring balance. Let's have a go. Well, pulling that steadily, I'm recording about two pounds force. But it snipped the bearings up, got rid of the end float that was causing the leakage as the seals get old. Um, that's what I've, I've got to change some on a tractor this summer that's what I'll be doing just out of interest next I'll have a go at nipping the nut up to see if I can produce the workshop manual figure and see how much um, force it takes on the uh, torque wrench so if anybody wa does want to do it by the book uh, they can have a go so uh, I'll go and talk up the other end now and we'll do it again okay I've now wound the nut up to 150 pounds torque because that's as high as my torque wrench goes let's see what we get Even at 150 pounds torque, I'm only getting six to eight pounds on the spring balance. And the figure we were looking for is between eight and a half to 11 pounds force. So the nut's got to be mega tight and I can't get it any tighter. Um, it's up to you what you do. I'm just doing the experiment, giving you the information. But uh, my own, I'll be just taking them up just to get rid of the end float and doing it that way do remember this is with the uh, this is a 460 flange with the six stud pattern used on the 460s and the uh, 1060s and the universals before it and it's a similar diameter to the 502 because i'm working from information in a 
uh, Marshall workshop manual. Uh, if you've got a, a 502, the figures, uh, sorry, if you've got a, a, the larger stud pattern, the force is less. And uh, these are for used bearings. The figures for both are slightly higher if you're putting new bearings in. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Happy tractoring everybody.